What up guys, do you have any friends or family members that are interested in jiu-jitsu and you being the grappling loving person that you are, you want to show them a few things to drag them along into this cult, I mean, martial art that we do? <laughs> well, this is what's going on with our buddy Dan. So Dan sends me a message and he says that he has some family members back home from where he's from and they're interested in doing jiu-jitsu. He's getting ready to go home to visit them, and so he sends me the message. He's like, Chewy, what is a good lesson that I could put together for my family members to show them a few things in jiu-jitsu and to do so in a way that would spark their interest so they want to keep doing it later on when I leave? And so I think it's a good question, so we're going to answer it one today. So Dan, thanks for the question, bro. And I'm going to answer this from more of like a human psychology sort of style of, instead of just talking about the technical stuff. I'll give you the technical stuff and what I would do and what I have done and what works, but I want you to understand why it works, right? So the analogy that I, I keep thinking of in my head is about dating, right? Let's think about dating for a second. Almost everybody has, has, has had this experience. When you go on a date with a person early on, right? Think about all the things that you do to get that person to basically to spark their interest in you so that they say, yeah, I like you. I'd like to take this further, right? You might dress a certain way so that you are you know, appealing to that person. They find you attractive. Maybe you dress in a way that you wouldn't normally dress day to day. You might also exhibit certain behaviors that you don't exhibit on a day to day basis, or maybe you're just on particularly good behavior. And you also might cover up certain behavior or traits that you have that maybe aren't so pleasant, right? And maybe you're trying to cover up things that they, you don't think that they would find pleasant about you, all this stuff, right? You get the idea. So we put on this front or we're trying to front load the, the, the good sides of ourselves to this person. So they're like, yeah, I like this. Now, once you get into the relationship, we've all had this experience, you really get to know this person, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? And hopefully you find someone where, you know, the good outweighs all the other stuff, but nonetheless, you find out stuff about this person that, again, if you had gone in on day one of that date and the first thing that popped up was all this nasty, ugly stuff, you probably wouldn't have chosen that person to continue the relationship with, right? You'd be like, ah, you know, I'm good, I pass. All right, here's where I'm going with this. I know so sometimes my ideas are kind of out there. With jiu-jitsu, right? Jiu-jitsu, we know this is difficult, right? You and I, we train. We're in on this. This is a difficult thing. It's not easy. I know lots of people in podcasts, they talk about this flowery language. Oh, man, it changed my life, and it's amazing. It's this beautiful thing, and it is, and it has changed people's lives, changed my life. But remember, it's done through difficult, uncomfortable, physical effort, that's where it's coming from, right? That's kind of the ugly side of it. It's rough. It's rough on the body. It's very difficult. And it's, you're dealing with uncomfort on a daily basis. This is why I say jiu-jitsu is all about getting, un, or getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? You got to embrace the suck. That said, when teaching a person in the beginning, what I like to do is two things. Number one, I want to show them an escape from mount. Why mount? Well, some of the positions in jiu-jitsu aren't really, if you don't know a lot about jiu-jitsu, they don't make a lot of sense to you. I mean, like, yeah, back mount, we understand we can choke, and side control looks like a wrestling pin, but everybody can see the utility of mount, right? It looks like you're being pinned down by a bully on the schoolyard, right? And so what I've done before, and what I like to do is I'll take someone, put them in the bottom of mount, and I will let them try to escape. And I'll say, go ahead and escape. Years ago, when people would walk in, if they were kind of skeptical about jiu-jitsu, and you know, I was in my young 20s, and I'd like to, you know, I don't know, just full of piss and vinegar. I say, cool, man, I'll give you a hundred bucks right now if you can escape mount. And when they couldn't, it was always kind of like this fun little trick, right? They can't get out of the position and they felt helpless, you know, and there was money on the table, right? I put the hundred dollar bill pop, right there. You can't escape. Well, with that, when they couldn't escape, then I would show them the escape and show them how to get out of it. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, this is one of the really cool things that you'll learn if you start training with us, right? And then what I'll also do is I will then teach them a submission of some sort, some submission that I think would probably work well for their body, maybe a triangle if they're long and lanky, maybe an arm lock, maybe a choke, whatever it is. Right? I'm going to show them a submission. And the reason being is because the submission is the fun part. It's the, it's the dessert of jiu-jitsu, right? When we put someone in control of their body and put them into a, a, get them to tap, that's like the thing that we all want to do. And so I want them to experience that and see what that's like. That made me excited about jiu-jitsu the first time I did it, learning a few cool submissions. And even to this day, when I teach someone, if I'm going to like go to a seminar or even with my students, if I'm teaching them a new position, let's say if we're sh uh, shifting the focus of classes and let's say we're working on 
Um, let's use an example of mount. We'll just use mount again. Then what I'll do is I will start with a lot of times with the submission. I'll start with the finish. And then I will work my way back. And the reason why I start with the finish is because one, I want them to know what the destination is. This is where we're trying to get to. But also two, if I give you a submission that feels pretty good to you and you're kind of excited about it, then you're going to be more apt to listen to me when I'm telling you, here's how we're going to get there. Like, here's where we're starting, okay? Or here's where we're gonna be ending, excuse me. And then once you get excited about that end result, then I say, okay, now here's how we're gonna get there. Similar, right? If I can get this person excited about these things, like being able to escape out of a bad position and being able to finish someone with the submission, then when they go into their training situation in the gym and they are, you know, smacked in the face with the reality of, oh, this is really difficult and it's very tough and it's exhausting. And again, with jujitsu, it's one thing to see it. It is another thing to feel it, right? Jiu-jitsu, it's feeling is believing. And so in that sense, again, you can get the person excited by showing them some of the escape, showing them some of the submissions, and they'll be able to weather that, you know, not so pleasant side of jujitsu. So in order to reach the stuff that they actually wanted to do. So again, I don't know if that made sense with the dating analogy, but that was kind of popping in my head. So hopefully it clicked with you guys. Um, but again, that's kind of what I do with a lot of the new people. If, if I have like a one-on-one -on -one session with them and they want to get into it, those are kind of a couple things that I focus on Dan. So hopefully it helps you brother, give you a couple ideas to chew on. Talk to you guys next time. Thank you.